Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will explain comparison in between Laplace transform and Fourier transform. And at last, I will derive relationship in between Laplace transform and Fourier transform. So let us begin this session with first agenda that is comparison of Laplace transform and Fourier transform. Here I will compare Laplace transform and Fourier transform based on different parameters. So let us compare Laplace transform and Fourier transform with respect to functions. Let us consider we have time domain function that is y of t. Then Laplace transform of time domain function y of t will be y of s where integration is having limit from minus infinite to plus infinite e to the power minus s t y of t dt. Here I have considered a limit from minus infinite to plus infinite. That is a limit which is associated with bilateral Laplace transform. You can have limit from 0 to infinite with normal Laplace transform. With bilateral Laplace transform, limit will be there from minus infinite to plus infinite. Right. If you have time domain signal y of t, then Fourier transform will be y of omega. In some books, they may mention y of j omega, that is also fine. So Fourier transform will be integration where limit ranges from minus infinite to plus infinite e to the power minus j omega t y of t dt. So if you carefully observe the functions, then here with e to the power, we have minus s t. Well, with Fourier transform, here we have e to the power minus j omega t. So with this s and with this j omega, entire function is there. Let me explain further comparison based on complex variable. See here we have complex variable that is s. One should know Laplace transform is based on s domain. So you need to understand what is the meaning of s. See, S is sigma plus j omega. Here, sigma that is real components. And here, omega is imaginary components. Right. While in Fourier transform, we only have imaginary components. Means we only have j omega. So you can observe here we have S. That is sigma plus j omega. While with Fourier transform, we only have imaginary components. Right. When you talk about convergence of signal, then one should know Laplace transform that can converge wide range of functions. Laplace transform can converge wide range of functions. Why? The reason is Laplace transform is having real as well as imaginary components. It is having dependency on ROC. ROC means region of convergence. In problem solving, I will explain how to identify ROC. Right now consider Laplace transform converges wide range of functions, right? While Fourier transform convergence is therefore limited signals only and those signals are absolutely integrable. So as if signal is absolutely integrable, then only one can identify Fourier transform. While Laplace transform can be identified for wide range of functions. Right. Now I will explain comparison based on stability analysis. When you talk about Laplace transform, then usually we use Laplace transform for stability identification. Based on Laplace transform, we can identify transfer function. And with transfer function, numerator roots that explains you zeros and denominator roots that explains poles. Location of poles explains stability of the system as if all the poles are there in left half plane, then one can say system is stable. So location of poles with Laplace transform explains stability. If all the poles are there in left half plane, 
then one can say given system is stable. In Fourier transform, we try to identify BIBO conditions. BIBO means bounded input, bounded output. As if your input is bounded and output is also bounded for given bounded input, then one can say given system is stable. So Fourier transform that we analyze as per BIBO for stability while Laplace transform that is useful in stability analysis with the use of location of poles, right? Now I will compare Laplace transform and Fourier transform for unit step input. See with unit step input, Laplace transform is 1 by S. While with Fourier transform, we don't have Fourier transform for unit step signal. The reason is in unit step signal, signal is rising immediately. So faster raise of signal is happening at one instant as if signal is increasing exponentially or if it is increasing very fast, then one cannot identify Fourier transform of it, right? So with unit step signal, Fourier transform that is not existing, right? Now I will compare Laplace transform and Fourier transform based on frequency interpretation. See with Laplace transform, we have two components. You can observe we have sigma as well as j omega. Sigma is having real components and omega that is having imaginary components, right? See real part that explains exponential growth or decay while that sigma is not available with Fourier transform. So in Laplace transform, real part that is sigma that explains exponential growth or decay of the signal while this omega that is imaginary part that is determining oscillatory behavior of signal, right? So imaginary component that explains oscillatory behavior of signal and real component sigma that explains exponential growth or decay of the signal, right? While with Fourier transform, we only have imaginary component that explains frequency components of the signal, right? So to analyze frequency spectrum, usually we use Fourier transform and in majority of stability analysis, we use Laplace transform. Now let me compare Laplace transform and Fourier transform based on connection between them. See Fourier transform that is a special case of Laplace transform. Laplace transform is having complex variable that is S that is sigma plus j omega. In Fourier transform we don't have real value means in Fourier transform this sigma value that is zero. So one can say Fourier transform that is a special case of Laplace transform where sigma is equals to zero. If you talk about applications, then Laplace transform that is widely used in control systems, in stability analysis, as well as in solving differential equations. While Fourier transform that we use it in signal processing, in frequency analysis, as well as in communications, right? So as if you want to analyze frequency spectrum, then with the use of Fourier transform, we can analyze frequency spectrum. But if you want to analyze system, if you want to analyze stability of the system, then one should go for Laplace transform, right? Now, I will derive relationship in between Laplace transform and Fourier transform. So let us consider we have input signal that is y of t, then Laplace transform will be y of s. That will be integration where limit ranges from minus infinite to plus infinite e to the power minus s t y of t dt. Again, I'm telling you, see, I'm taking this limit from minus infinite to plus infinite. That is a case of bilateral Laplace transform. Normally, you can write limit from zero to infinite. There is no issue with that, right? And as if you have input signal, which is y of t, then Fourier transform will be integration where limit ranges from minus infinite to plus infinite 
e to the power minus j omega t y of t dt. See here with Laplace transform, we have complex variable that is s and s is equals to sigma plus j omega that one should know, right? If you substitute this in this Laplace transform equation, then here we will be having e to the power minus sigma plus j omega instead of s. See here e to the power is there. So you can multiply e to the power minus sigma t with e to the power minus j omega t. So if you separate these two, then here you can observe we have e to the power minus j omega t into e to the power minus sigma t into y of t. So you can consider a spatial signal that is y of t into e to the power minus sigma t that will be a Fourier transform definition, right? So you can say Laplace transform of y of t that is Fourier transform of y of t into e to the power minus sigma t, right? So that is what the basic relation which is there with Laplace transform and Fourier transform. Laplace transform of y of t that is Fourier transform of y of t into e to the power minus sigma t, right? So that is how one can understand relationship in between Laplace transform and Fourier transform. I hope you have enjoyed this session. Still, if you have any confusion, just place that in comment section. I'll be happy to help you. Thank you so much for watching this video.